this stage to get interested above all, above, get interested in what I call man, in other words, the human being. And I went to study in Bonn. And I ran into the fact that in the German language, the word for a human being is der Mensch. The Mensch, you probably know it. And in Jewish slang, they use the word Mensch. It just means a human being. And I found this enormously simplifying, because when you say, when you say a human being, it's an awkward kind of, when you say a mensch, meaning a man, we, we feel, it's like on dinner in Irish. If you say dinner, it's a much more alive than a human being. Dinner is any man or woman. And that eased very much my thinking about man. At this stage, I've got more complicated. Do you man? And I, and that's what led to my first book. You see, I'd got from traveling around Europe to know Europe, Europe really well. I knew it's European history, I knew European peoples, I knew several European languages. And in an idea of how it had been with man in this part of the world, I understood that man, that Western man. But the other half where man had developed to the greatest cultural heights was Asia. And I said, I want to go and see that other half. And when I've seen that other half, I put the two together, and then I understand man. And it so happens I have here that book. Am I okay, Dustin? I have that book, and at the end of it, I actually, you'll see where, I say in the open, opening this book, which describes all of my days in Japan and China, India and Malaysia and so on. And at the very end, I say the following. This is the... I do not know so many things about men, the world, and God as I, as I used to think I knew. But the few things I know, I know better. The East really taught me man. Put him on a blackboard with chalk and diagrams, spelled him out to me in block letters. I learned there that the first and greatest good of man on the earth is to exist and grow. In other words, the first imperative purpose of any society of all its wisdom, morality, and jurisprudence must be to ensure that the children shall have rice or bread. This task requires the building of an edifice of trust. All men build this edifice conjointly. In modern societies, all men and women build it. It rests partly on the sacredness of blood bonds, partly on the sacramentality of words spoken, hands pressed, gifts exchanged. The edifice of trust permits each man in his turn to exist and begin to grow. Loyalty and truth, then, are the primary virtues. A non-true word or act strikes at the basis of society and the existence of each individual is there for the essential sin. Just a few more sentences. In those several years, I in my twenties, and by putting together Europe and the West, and putting together the East, I'd come to these very simple, basic sentences about what man is, what the human condition is, what it is to be. That obviously, I mean, I was progressing from elementary things to, to deeper things, but that's the way I did it, simply by going around and looking and looking and, and, and thinking. And I found, and if, if you start, if, if any of you try this business of going beneath the surface of things, you'll find it worries to be. That book of mine, for instance, my uncle in Belfast, he was a great reader of travel books. And he said, it's a nice book, it's well written, but there's too much about it. <laughs> <laughs> he cottoned on what I was on to, he smelled it. He knew what a, a, an ordinary travel book was that just tells, and then I went and that, and that did this and after that and did that. He said, look. And some years later, uh, I'm back in Dublin now and doing various things, writing papers and so on. And people just smell this kind of peering beneath the surface stuff in my work, you know. Worry, it worries Irish people in particular. It makes them uneasy. What's he going to find out? <laughs> what, what you, you know, he's going to upset the apple. And I went for a job in the Irish Times uh, as an art critic because I was very much into painting. And the interview board, a very frank uh, assistant editor, said, well, you see, the trouble with Desmond is, 
pinky finger philosophy. <laughs> In other words, the smell was wrong. The smell of philosophy. He thinks that he's, he's supposed to be a critic about painting, but he shouldn't bring your philosophy. Well, I mean, I, being the person, I would, couldn't do nothing else, <laughs> of course, but that's. And I mean, finally, I want to say uh, this uh, I've talked to you, I've given you the idea that the world is a, a series of misrepresentations that the thinker pours beneath and, and to get at the, the nature of things, how things really are. This is true. But don't think for that reason that this make believe in which you live, where all that is powerful and official, tells you a series of untruths. But these are true things are well told, and they glue together, and they make a coherent pattern, and the world seems intelligible to you on that basis, and it seems intelligible to the police, and to the doctors, and to the dentists, and to the civil servants, and the world exists because of this glue of misrepresentation, of these proclaimed good and bad. The good side of the war, the bad side of the war, blah, blah, blah. Saddam Hussein was, was a, a terrible man and the present government of Iraq is wonderful, where more people are killed every day than were ever killed at the same time. But you mustn't say that. No, this, this agreement on misrepresentations, which are necessary for the world to hold together, and ultimately because of these misrepresentations that glue the world together, a woman can go out and shop alone at 8 or 9 o'clock at night in the dark without fear of being overcome, without fear of being assaulted. There is safety in the streets because of the network of misrepresentation. <coughs> so don't, if you become a thinker, don't disrespect it, because the world would not exist unless there were these agreed misrepresentations. Not, not that evil men think of lies. No, they think of, they think of convenient things. And they tell you happy-making things. And you believe in happy-making things because you want to be happy. And, and the whole thing works. The world holds. It's good that the world holds because of the children, the women, the, 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 the old and, and, and fragile who are on the streets and who otherwise would be savagely attacked with machete and have their houses broken in. You see? Right. So there's two reasons to be grateful to this untrue representation of the world. First of all, the clothes were together, which we all benefit by that. I mean, street out there is pretty predictable. It wouldn't be predictable if you didn't have this network of lies. Right. But the second wonderful reason why it's good that the world is a, is, is, is a set of misrepresentations, it, it offers work to the thinker. <laughs> <laughs> because if all these misrepresentations weren't there, if words were not given false meaning, he'd have nothing to do. So it's actually the beginning and end of his very Joyous, joyous, tiring, dangerous work. That's what I want to say to you now. That's, that's <laughs> what I have to say. Come with your questions. <laughs> Are you saying then that people can only be happy when they're under an illusion of some kind? Um, most people, most of the time. Well, most I don't. People, I don't I, but they don't know they're illusions, you see. I don't agree with that. Well, there you are. 
<laughs> I mean, actually, most people, and that's what I told you, as if, if any of you try this on, start, start thinking deeply about things and let the word get round. You'll find you make the people around you very uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable. What about, what about the notion that the truth sets us free? It does, sets you free. <laughs> it sets you who discover it free, and it sets the people who accept your communication of it to them, who are always, not everybody. But certainly the truth does set us free, because we live then in reality. I mean, what is freer than living in full knowledge of how things are, then you are free. Even though how things are may be not as nice as you thought it was. But reality, reality, there is, there is nothing more wonderful than reality. 